Well, Australian Survivor Season 2 has now come to a close, and the question on every Aussie Survivor fan's lips is, will there be a Season 3? And I think most of us are definitely hoping that there will be. And hopefully if this video in some small part can help to show Channel 10 that there is demand for a Season 3, we might just get a Season 3. Because right now it seems to be a little bit up in the air, Channel 10's going through some problems, so they're not sure if a third season would be like economically feasible right now, but the channel is going to be bought out by the American-owned CBS, and CBS owns the American Survivor. So the odds are pretty good that in the long run we'll get another Australian Survivor, but who knows, it might be a couple years down the track. But if perhaps through this video with ways that I'll show you at the end, we can show that there's a real demand out there for Australian Survivor, we could maybe get a Season 3 next year. So here are some of the ideas that I think they could use in Season 3 that could maybe iron out some of the problems that Season 2 had, while at the same time cranking up those elements that they brought in that worked really, really well. So let's get into it. Australian Survivor is different from American Survivor because it has 28 contestants and goes for 55 days. That's a massive, massive game. A number of people have complained though that this often leads to a lot of non-elimination episodes in order to pad it out. But it's necessary for the show to be that size in order to make its money back. And I don't agree with critics who say they should shorten it to 30 days and chop it down to like 18 contestants like the American one. I disagree. I think we can keep it this size but we need to bring in certain other elements to make sure that each episode is packed with enough stuff that makes it entertaining. Season 2 started out with two tribes. I like what they're doing right now with the American Survivor of healers, hustlers and heroes where there's three tribes in the beginning. That keeps the group smaller, it's easier to sort of to keep track of who everyone is in a smaller group and it also means that there's less places for people to hide out seasons. You know sometimes you get people who just hide away and then sort of pop up at the end of the season and end up winning it. That doesn't make for really interesting TV so having three three tribes instead of two is a good way of preventing that from happening. So because I've got a number of different ideas for different stages of the game, I'm going to plan it all out here for you. The game's divided up into three sections and I've got different elements we're going to feed in to the game in those three different stages. Let's get into it. In season two, we had a mutiny. There was a moment where somebody could choose to mutiny and go over to the other side and it was Pete. This ruffled a lot of feathers, but I actually think the idea is sound. I just think they need to change the way in which it's executed. What if committing mutiny was an option that someone could have if they found a piece of silver, a mutineer's piece of silver, like the old pirate coin treasure that they can trade for passage to another tribe. See, this is why it's good if you've got three tribes. So in each of those three tribes, there'd be a piece of silver hidden away, sort of like an immunity idol or sort of like a clue. The point of making it like a piece of silver is just to sort of differentiate it a bit from like immunity necklaces because it does function differently, but you can play it at tribal to swap to another tribe. So if you really feel like you're gonna get voted out, you don't have an immunity idol and you've got no other options, you can flick that piece of silver over it to Jono and you can jump ship to a different tribe. But to make it interesting and to make it more strategic, we could say this piece of silver, you can play it after the votes have been read. So if you've been voted out, you can play your piece of silver and instead of getting voted out, jump to the other tribe. So because this is an item that you earn on your own merits and you play yourself, that removes the element that bothered a lot of people in season two of like Tara and Annalisa getting swapped rather than voted out at tribal because that was not due to any skill on them. It was due to the producers changing it. But by allowing people to swap tribes with a piece of silver that they play, strategy and tactic remain sound. You would also be able to give this coin to someone else if you've got a close ally who's about to be voted out and you're worried about it. You can give the coin to them so that they can jump ship. But, and this is important, you cannot use this coin to forcibly kick someone out of the tribe and send them to another one against their will. You can't do that because that wouldn't be fair. And to make it a little bit more interesting, rather than them just finding their piece of silver out in the middle of nowhere, I'd make it that because it's like a coin, it's money, you would need to earn it. So because you're basically committing mutiny against your tribe, in trading this piece of silver, you would then need to commit like a mutinous act. Like you would find a clue hidden out there, you'd think, oh, it's an immunity item, you'd read the clue and it would say, you have a chance to earn a piece of silver that can buy you passage into another tribe if you choose. But in order to earn it, you're gonna have to do a mutinous act like destroy your tribe's rice or hide the flint 
or throw the next immunity challenge. You have to do like a treacherous act to get the mutineer's coin. And if there's one piece of silver in each tribe, that means you can have three non-elimination episodes that don't rob us of any strategy or any scheming because it's part of the game now. It's not just the producers saying, you're jumping to another tribe. The second thing I do is what I call a message in a bottle. You know how in a lot of these old stories of like pirate stories or shipwreck stories, people put a message in a bottle and drift it out at ocean in the hopes that someone might find it? Well, what if hidden away in each of these three tribes, there's a special bottle that is basically the equivalent of tree mail, but for a specific person in the other tribe. And this will be a method by which any person who finds this message in a bottle can start a secret correspondence with someone in the other tribe tribe and start build up maybe a secret alliance with people in the other tribe before they even meet officially face to face. You could write a little letter to them saying, I'm in this tribe, this is the power structure, here's the problems that I'm facing over here, what's things like on your end, put it in the bottle, it'll get sent over to them on the other tribe, you come back to the bottle the next day and you'll get a reply from that person who will hopefully be telling you, giving you advice, telling you what's happening in their situation. So you can start to form connections with people in other tribes secretly before the merge. This could lead to some very interesting situations where often in the merge you have two big alliances going at each other and if within those two alliances, people there already have secret connections with each other, that could lead to some really interesting blindsides and very interesting scenarios I think could happen. Again, when we have three tribes, this will make it much more interesting. Three pieces of silver, three messages in a bottle, and three tribes. And after a few people have been eliminated through tribals, and the numbers drop sufficiently enough, these three tribes can merge together and form two tribes. To go hand in hand with this, I'd also bring in a new thing called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire! Turn on the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire! Oh. You said you could do it. The Ring of Fire! <laughs> yes, the Ring of Fire. You know how we have immunity necklaces? Well, this would be a ring that you wear on your finger. I'm just trying to add a little bit of variety to these new things. That's why I've got piece of silver as a coin. I've got this ring of fire as a ring, just so that not everything's a necklace you wear. But this would not grant immunity. What it would do is that it would allow you to demand a fire challenge in the event that you get voted out. So if you get voted out and you have one of these fire rings, you can say, I demand a fire challenge. And you can challenge someone else in the tribe to that fire making challenge and if you lose you get voted out as per usual but if you win and you make fire first you go back to the tribe and the person you challenged is sent to exile island for a couple of days like let's say three days or whatever this is a good way of keeping strong players around because a problem that Australian Survivor seems to be having is that a lot of the people who are really good players always get targeted because they're good players and that might be sound strategy but in terms of TV it's it makes the show less interesting as it goes on because we want our big characters we want our big players in there they're the ones who make the show interesting so putting in something like a fire ring could give these big players an extra chance to save themselves and it could also be very useful for like building up nemesis storylines like let's say someone blindsides you when you get voted out so you play the fire ring and you challenge the person who betrayed you and you win so they get sent to exile island but then by the time they get out of exile island they'll be like oh, i want some revenge now so it'll build up these real sort of rivalries and it could make for really great TV. Well, how do you get a ring of fire? Well, these fire rings go all the way back to day one. The very first person on day one who succeeds in making a fire in each of those three tribes gets a fire ring. But the fire ring does not become active until the three tribes become two tribes. Then the fire rings are activated. Now, if the person who receives the fire ring gets voted out before that time, before the three tribes become two, then they can gift it as like a legacy item to someone else in that tribe. Now, what about the final stage of the game after the big merge. Going all the way back to day one, let's say there was a certain treasure chest in each of the tribes that has like a combination lock on the top. It looks like an old timey treasure chest. Maybe the combination lock is like uh, three or four like rotating pieces. Maybe the symbols are like animals, like survivor type animals or something like that. But they've just been in each of these tribes and no one can open it. No one knows the combination. But everyone's wondering, what is this treasure chest? What's in it? When are we going to find out? And we keep them around the entire game to sort of build up the mystery of what it 
it is until the merge, when everyone's put in one tribe and there's only one treasure chest there now. Maybe it's somewhere near like Tree Mel, so it's sufficiently away from camp, but it's there. And after the merge, when immunity becomes individual immunity, on the immunity necklace, like let's say on the back of it, discreetly, they'll be carved into it the symbols that unlock the treasure box. So if you win immunity, you know the code to unlock the treasure box. And when you unlock the treasure box, what you find inside there is a detailed blueprint and plan for what the next immunity challenge is going to be. You'll know exactly what it is. You'll know what the elements of the game are, whether it's a resistance challenge, whether it's a balancing challenge, you'll know ahead of time. You won't be able to practice. You won't have access to it ahead of time or anything like that, but you will have the advantage of foreknowledge. You'll know what it will be ahead of time. This means that each person who wins immunity is also going to get that advantage of foreknowledge for the next immunity challenge. And this is important because as the game of Survivor has sort of tightened up, in this final stage of the game is when physical threats are in their most peril. Everyone wants to take out the physical threat. So giving them a little bit of a boost in this regard will kind of help to even the playing field a bit and will make the show much more interesting. Some might worry that this might actually give too much power to physical threats, but I don't think so. So, because quite often we see like with Lockie in last season they were just waiting like tribal after tribal after tribal for him to like lose an immunity challenge and I think there's only really been one dude who's been able to win like so many immunity challenges in a row to make it all the way to the end I mean no matter how good you are the odds of doing that is very very slim so I actually don't think it's overpowering the physical challenges in this part of the game because the odds are stacked up against them to such an extreme it just kind of this would help balance it out and keep the strong players around which is what we need for the show to be interesting, especially in this late stage. I also think it's very important that instead of a final two, we have a final three, because I really don't like the idea that when it's a final two, whoever wins the last immunity challenge can pick who they're sitting next to. I don't like that. I think that's really unfair because you could have someone there who's done everything else right in the game, but then that last step, that last bit of their game, they have absolutely no control over. And it, it just seems really unfair to me that someone would make it all that way and then could be cut down right at the finish line. Just doesn't seem right. But a final three, the person who wins the last immunity doesn't get that kind of unilateral power. It's still a vote. There's still moves that can be made and may the best man win. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> My pitch for like how season three could continue to be 55 days with lots more contestants, make it three tribes, bring in pieces of silver so that people can mutiny as like a last ditch effort to save themselves when you got three parts, bring in the message in a bottle so people can start forming connections with people in rival tribes before they merge to two or merge as one. And then when they do merge as two, that's when we bring in the fire rings. The ability for people to challenge those to fire making challenge in an effort to save themselves to try to keep the strong players around and the final sprint of the game after the merge we activate the secret treasure boxes with the codes on the back of the immunity necklaces that give you foreknowledge of the next challenge and we make it a final three at the end not a final two so there it is that's there's all my ideas for season three i'm sure there's people who disagree with certain elements and everything and that's okay but the point of this is we want to show channel 10 that we're passionate about this show and we do want a third season so Jonathan LaPaglia is on Twitter so why not tweet this video to Jonathan LaPaglia help me out tweet it at him I've actually got a ready-made comment down in the description below so if you can't be bothered to type out a whole thing you can just copy and paste that and just paste it right there on Twitter let's try to get this word out there let's try to get some buzz going for season three to show all the the bean counters and the producers and everyone at channel 10 that we do want another season thanks for watching guys I'm bandit this is bandit at strategy and until next time i will see you guys in the comments